You never know what you're going to get. Ain't that what life is all about? Yes. Wake up every morning, what's it going to be, Lord? Well, I don't know. We'll just have to stick around and see. I'd like to say this morning, I'm just filling in for the pastor, and he'd love to be here this morning, and we know that. And certainly, uh, we follow along with all of his teachings. We love him dearly in the Lord, and every one of you in the Lord. And anything that we can do to help out is what we're doing. We're just helping out, and the Lord calls us home. We don't know when that's going to be, but we know that while we're here, we're supposed to do something for God. You're not supposed to sit down, relax, take it easy. That ain't God's way. We have to keep moving for God. Pastor will be back. He'll work you over like I'm going to try to this morning. And the next one follows this, this pulpit will work you over too. There was a lady this morning, I wouldn't call her name. She said, don't step on my toes this morning. That's something, isn't it? She should have wore steel toe shoes. <laughs> and if I don't step on your toes, I haven't done my job. I want to talk this morning shortly. Uh, we're running short of time, so may not get to everything. But let's go to the book of Genesis. I'm going to read a verse, in, uh, a scripture there to you. Being the first verse, in the 31st verse, uh, uh, first chapter, 31st verse. And God saw everything, saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the six days. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you'll be here this morning. We thank you'll be able to fill in for our pastor. We love him, and dear God, we know that he'll be back. We know that he'll come back and take his place and lead us until God calls us all home. And Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us and all the good things that we have received from you. We have not received anything bad. We don't deserve what we get, God, and we know that. But Father, we pray that you'll give me strength this morning to bring this message and that it will touch hearts and someone might find their way to the cross. For we ask it in the glorious name of Christ. Amen. Most of you have read the, uh, the book of Genesis. And we know that God created everything that was created. Amen. He took his time and he made everything put in place and it was good. Until man messed it up. But we find here that God worked six days. In his calendar that would be 6,000 years to build the world. A thousand years, one day was of God. So we know that he spent a long time putting everything together. Who did he make it for? Who did he intend this all to go? Think about all the little birds and all the little animals and all the big animals and just go on and on all the trees, the mountains, the scrubs. The flowers that bloom in the springtime. All that God made and put into place. He didn't do it for himself. No. After he got done with it, he made man. He made us from the dust of the earth. And he breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. And we became a living soul. And all this that he made was for that. For us. None of that was made for himself. Six days he worked. The seventh day he rested. And if you put all that together, you would deserve a rest after 6,000 years. I'm, I don't think we can make it that long. Six days would probably wore us out. But let's look. Now if we suppose, and this is, we know that nobody knows when Christ is coming. Not even the angel, not even Jesus himself. Only God. 
Now I want you to keep that in mind. And all of us suppose that we could, we would know the last six days that we're going to live. Have you ever thought about that? What would you do in those last six days for God? And what are you doing for God? You're doing it for yourself too. What would we do in those six days? Let's take the first day. If someone told you, said, tomorrow will be the beginning of your six days and you will be gone from this face of the earth. And we knew it for sure. Now don't get in mind that I'm trying to tell you I know when Jesus is coming. I don't. But suppose we would know what would you do with those six days. The first day, I would believe that we would think about God, His creation, and what He'd done for us, and He loved us so much. He said of all the things He created, He loved man. We should, mind should be upon God the first day. He created us. We belong to Him. He made us from dust of the earth. And thus shall we return if the Lord tarries. So we would think, concentrate on God. We would see what He'd done for us. Look at it and think about it. And all the love that He put into it for us. He did it for us. If you don't think God loves you, you lack something in your life. You haven't met Jesus. When you meet Jesus, you know about love. You know about compassion. And you know what? Jesus died on the cross for us. We ought to have our minds on God the first day. And we should have it every day that we live in this life now. He did it all for us. Made all the stuff. The second day, I think we ought to think about our salvation. Do we really have Jesus Christ as our Savior in our hearts? Some people sat in the church for a long time and never found Jesus Christ. We know that to be a fact. So just because you come to church don't mean you're going to be saved. You have to accept Jesus individually as your own so we ought to be thinking about, do we really know we're saved? Jesus said we can know we're saved. I know my sheep and my sheep are know, knows me. And I lead them into everlasting life. Search that soul this morning, your heart, and make sure you're saved. All the rest, it won't mean nothing if you're not. The second day, we should think about our soul. And what, where are we going? The third day, I think we ought to think about what Jesus really done on the cross of Calvary. He died for us, and he never knew sin. It was us that sinned. We nailed him to the cross. You know, people say the Romans nailed him to the cross. Some people say the Jews nailed him to the cross. But we all nailed him to the cross. None of us is not guilty of it. We were born in sin. And thank God we can leave here with everlasting life through the Son of Christ. That died on Calvary's cross. That gave it all that he could. His own life for us. We need the second day ought to be thinking about Christ. The third day we ought to be think, thinking about what are we going to do when we see him? When we see heaven, are we going to be happy and satisfied? Yes, you will. God never done anything halfway. Why should he start now? He said, I'll build you a kingdom in heaven. And I'll, I'll, there'll be a home for you. There'll be a mansion for you. Not a shack. My uncle used to say, I, I'm going to be saved by the seat of my pants. And if he'll just give me a little out place in, in heaven, a little cabin, I'll be happy. That's not true. He said mansions, not cabins. So, we know where we're going. Do we? 
You better know. May not even have six days. I'm just saying six days. What do we all do the fourth day? What would you really do the fourth day if you knew you just had six now? You're down to the fourth one. What would you do? You would think about your friends, wouldn't you? You remember the rich man. The, the rich man never thought about that old beggar. And he never thought about his brothers and never mentioned it until he got into hell and he asked God just to send Lazarus. That old beggar now that he didn't have nothing to care about, didn't know nothing about. He said, would you just let him drip, put his hand in water, get a drip of water on my tongue. If not, send someone to warn my brothers from not coming to this awful place. He had five of them. He was concerned. What did God tell him? If you don't listen to Moses and the prophets, if you don't, if you don't listen to Jesus Christ, there is no hope for you. You have to listen to God, accept Jesus Christ. You'll never see the kingdom of heaven. You'll never see it. I think the fifth thing, especially as we think about our, our loved ones that we are friends in the fourth, the fifth we ought to be thinking about our loved ones. The people that's close to our heart, the ones that are our kinfolks, our little nieces and nephews. We ought to think about our kinfolks and do our level best to get them to Christ before it's too late. And there is a time coming when the trumpet shall sound and the lo loved ones that you know dearly in your heart won't make it because they have not found Christ as their Savior. How many friends, loved ones you know that does not know Christ? Do you work on them? Do you ask them, they ought, tell them they ought to be saved? Do you ask them to accept Jesus Christ? Do you invite them to church? Do you do your very best to get them to the house of God where they can hear the message and be saved? Or do you carry the message to them? Think about it. The six things before we die, what would you do the last day? Now that be that's a serious day. That's the last day. Now you already know that you're going to heaven. You wouldn't be very unhappy. But if you were lost and you're lost this morning, you think about the last day you have a chance to be saved. That last day before the trumpet sound or when the death angels come. It is the last. If you die without Christ and you've heard the word of God, you're condemned to everlasting hell. Think about it. If you're here lost this morning, that last day would be very important. The last day to a Christian would be very important. I, I, I would, would you just be ready to go? Would you be prayed up, saddled up, prayed up, and smiling and singing the hymns of Zion on that last day? Or would you be thinking about all the mistakes you made and all the things you've done against God. And you've never asked forgiveness. All that would come to life on that last day, wouldn't it? You think of all the many times you could have been in church and you didn't come. How many of the people that you've met in this life that you never invited to come and accept Christ as their personal Savior? And in closing, the seventh day. The day that you go home as a Christian. That would be the glorious day. That would be the greatest thing in all of our lives. Nothing will ever match that. You know he said he's going to come as a thief in the night. 
And I can't even believe he'll come at the midnight hour when nobody's looking, everybody's asleep. Well, it's almost out of way now. They're, most of the world's asleep when it comes to God. But just think about it. That day, you're headed home. You put, you've got this old world. It's going to be behind you, and you're headed home. And just think, if you got up the midnight hour, Drove yourself to down to some park. And you know the very hour that he was coming. And you look up into the stars and you see the Milky Way. And you see the moon and all the glories of looking into the sky. When it's so clear and it's blue and it's so beautiful. Their minds can't comprehend it. And out you enter in the heavens. A bright light begins to shine and it comes down and whoops you up and takes you back to heaven. My, that would be a great day, wouldn't it? I'm looking forward to that day that my God will come and get me. I can't hardly walk. I got all kinds of trouble, all kinds of problem. But as long as I'm alive, I'm going to preach the gospel of Christ until I die. If I die in the pulpit, so be it. I say to you this morning, when that light shines, and the beauty of it, this, if you die through death. Now, of course, if the Lord comes, you're going to see him in the sky and all the host of heaven with him. But this morning, he could come any time. The death angel could cry any time. Would you be in the light or would you be in the darkness? I asked unto you this morning, that is decision you need to make this morning. Where do you stand with God? Are you saved? Are you ready to go home? Sometimes people say, why does preachers talk about hell so much? Well, if there's a bridge out down there and somebody stopped you and said, the bridge is out, you'd stop, wouldn't you? You wouldn't head into that bridge. You'd have better, so I'm sure you'd have better sense than that. Why have you lived in this life without Jesus? He spoke to you and called you before, and you didn't come. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, or what state you're in. If you don't have Jesus, you're lost and you're going to hell. I got Jesus, and I'm going home to glory one of these days. Whenever my time is up, or the Lord comes, and I pray to God you'll be with me. And we'll walk through the gates of heaven together. And we'll sing the old Christmas hymns and the great songs of the universe to, until forever. We'll walk the streets of gold. And I pray, God, that everyone here this morning, I see you in heaven. And if you don't go, don't blame me. I've told you. God told you this morning through me. Couldn't preach a word without God. Don't ever go to become a preacher and try to preach without God. You don't make it. As the song leader comes, the pianist and the organist, we sing a verse of invitation. I, I want you to search your heart. And I repeat again, I don't know when he's coming. Don't be mis leave here and said that old preacher said he knew when he was going to die and when he was going to the uh, Lord's coming. No, I didn't say that. I told you for it. I don't know, but I'm supposing what you would do the last six days. And I hope it stays with you. I hope you remember the last six days. And it could be tomorrow. It could be five years from now. I have no idea. But God knows.